Okay, so um, what I'm going to do is we will cover um, aware clause uh, right off the bat, because um, what I'd like to do is I'd like to have our our where clause covered because it looks like some of you guys want to cover that, which is absolutely fine. That's actually really good. Um, so we're going to talk a little about the where clause because I know that there's a couple really tricky questions in there. Um, and really what this week's going to focus on is less of um, kind of like the simple and or stuff. And it's going to focus on a couple of distinct functions or functionalities of the where clause um, that are going to kind of be more of a deep dive. But obviously, what I, one of the things that I like about the way this course is structured is that it is uh, very much uh, repetitive. So if you, it's okay if you don't 100% understand it as of right now, um, because we're going to keep circling back to it. We're going to keep circling back to almost everything in the course, or at least give you more practice, because um, we're going to kind of build up and eventually get there. So um, let me get logged into my SQL here real quick. My username. Here we go. All right, maybe we can do part of this duplicate and I'll think about that here in a minute. But um, so basically what we're going to kind of cover this week is, is uh, like I said, some of the deeper functions of where clauses. Um, and so one thing I want to show here real quick, um, and I kind of put this together for me. Uh, here we go. Here's some of uh, what I like to kind of do as a quick little cheat sheet and it's not completely um, complete. I need to add any in here. Um, but one of the, I kind of like this because it kind of helps me see it really fast. Um, but with our where clause, we have operators. Um, Cause really what we're doing with the where clause is we're comparing something to something else. So we're really doing a comparison operator. Um, and so some of the ones we're gonna cover this week are a little bit more um, advanced. So, um, you know, we can have an equal to a greater than, a less than, greater than or equal, less than or equal. Those ones are all kind of the more simple ones. Um, then there's also the not equal. I guess I should include that. These ones are all kind of more on the sequel, um, the simple side um, because, you know, they're, they're pretty easy to kind of guess at. Um, but we're going to add a couple more um, like the between operator um, where you kind of look to say, hey, is this uh, between a certain date or is it between a number? Now, obviously it only works for certain data types, but it's really handy. Um, the other one that I think you probably briefed on for a little while because you're gonna talk about regular expression and things like that is the like operator. Um, and the like operator lets you kind of do some regular expression. So you can return results that are kind of, I like to call them fuzzy. Um, so like if you've ever done a fuzzy search where like you start typing a name and it returns everybody. So like, for example, if I had where last name is like PO, it's going to return Potter, Poe, Pope, and whatever, whatever else starts with a capital P lowercase O. Um, so like is kind of a big one and there's, there's a, a little bit to do there because um, regular expression and someone on team shared a great resource um, if someone can remember it, you can throw it in the chat, but there was a, a great website resource resource on regular expression um, that lets you kind of, it helps you build out regular expression, make sure it's valid, that sort of thing. So that's really good. Um, and then another one is the in clause um, and it just checks in a list. So I could say, hey, is last name in these ones. And so basically what that does is it saves you a lot of typing. So you don't have to say where last name is equal to Potter or last name is equal to Weasley or a last name is equal to Granger. Instead, um, we can just have say last name is in and then provide a list. Um, and then a couple others, like I said, one that I don't have in here is the MySQL anyone. And any is kind of more on uh, the trickier side. Um, so the any and all operators allow you to perform a comparison between a single column value and a range of, of other values. And so what's nice is you can kind of, here's a good example of the any syntax. You can say where the column name is, let's say equal to any 
Um, and so this one's kind of like a, a um, I, yeah, and here's a good, I'll, I'll let this explain it because they've already summed it up for me. So it returns a Boolean value as a result, which is, which is what we want, right? Anytime we're comparing two things, it's either true or false. Is five equal to five? True. Is six equal to five? False. Um, in this case, it returns true if all of the subquery values meet the condition. Um, so basically what that means is, is all of these, and what it means by the subquery values, this is the subquery. So it returns true if, for the all operator, if all of them are equal to true, then, then we're good. So like, let's say for example, um, let's see if we can find, let's see if we can pull up a quick example here. Let's use Sequila. So let's do the all operator first. Um, and let's say, cause, uh, and I know we haven't covered subqueries too much yet, but we're gonna we're gonna try it here in just a minute. So let's say we want everything from. Let's see what this looks like. Um. Okay. Might be able to make return date work. So we have return date in rental. Um. So let's say where return date is greater than or equal to. And in this case, we're gonna select uh, the rental date. Select rental date. Quit auto completing for me. All right, and we need obviously our all operator here. Let's give this a whirl. Now we didn't get any, um, but basically the reason why this is returning false is because our return date is greater than, it is not greater than all of the following. But let's say uh, that, um, so this, this subquery, let's just run this by itself. I think this will help make more sense. And I wish we had a better example here. So here's all of our subquery results. We have this and let's kind of make this specific. Let's say where rental date is equal to, well, let's just get the date. We don't want it to be a timestamp. So let's say the date of rental date is equal to, and let's say 2005-05-24. And we should only get a few records here. All right, so now let's take and put our subquery here. And this is nice if you want to make sure that all, um, so whatever we get here, we know that the return date is greater than everything in this subquery. So this is really handy if you kind of want to say like, oh, I know I have this query that pulls, let's say, um, all the rentals in 2005, May 24th. Um, and we want all of the the records that were returned after or on the same day as that, for whatever reason, you know, whatever your business logic is, the return date here has to be greater than or equal to every record in this list. If that makes sense. Does all make sense to everybody? It has to be greater than all of them. Oh, and they kind of have a good example here. Um, Okay, let's see if they have a good one here. Um, so the any is a little different. So the any operator, um, it is going to, um, where do they describe it? All syntax, any syntax. Okay, so the any syntax 
is is like the all operator except for it's more of just like a list so really the any operator could be used in the in as well um, because as long as uh, one of them is true as long as one of them evaluates to true then you're good the only difference the only reason that any is nice um, versus the in the one time you might need it is for like comparison operators um, because you can't say where return date is greater than or equal to in you know what i mean so so the the any is nice because then it's like having a list and as long as return date is greater than or equal to one of the results from our subquery, then we're good. So if return date is greater than or equal to any one of these, we're solid. All right, does that make sense to everybody somewhat? You'll probably read about it and maybe they'll have a better example that's a little bit more clear, but. Okay, um, and someone did share that um, really nice regular expression, um, which is really nice. So here's that regular expression uh, website, regex101.com. I need to just bookmark that because it's really, really nice. All right. I think that's pretty much it for the where. Does anyone have any where specific questions that they'd like to cover? Okay. Let's go here quick. What we will do is I'm going to do a quick little diagram here um, of just something kind of basic um, that kind of help uh, um, kind of help us get um, an idea, a sense of where we're what what kind of scope and where to kind of start um, with our um, our database. And I'm probably just going to, um, do this diagram today. And this isn't the ERD essentially, but this is kind of where I like to start. And normally, to be honest, I actually do this on paper. Um, I usually don't even go as far to do this electronically. Um, I just do it on paper, kind of quick jot it out and, and it works for me. Um, so I'm just going to go here. Um, let's save it in downloads. We'll save it as demo ERD. All right. Um, and it kind of puts some stuff in here for us, which I'm okay with because it kind of gives me something to copy and paste from. Um, but we're we're gonna delete a lot of it. In fact, let's just delete all of it. All right. So one idea that I've uh, had for a little bit that I've wanted to kind of do is a way to quickly track um, some time. Um, Uh, quickly track some time like if I'm doing something for like a contract or or uh, um, doing something uh, for somebody or I just want to track like okay you know like how much time do I spend a day um, doing x y or z um, so I kind of wanted a way to kind of track that and keep uh, categories of where that's going so kind of like a time log um, so let me uh, let me grab a square. Um, and I kind of like to just kind of create these little squares or bubbles. And I don't really even like to put column names in there. I kind of like to just show um, a basic overview um, to kind of wrap my head around it. So the first thing that I'm going to start off with um, that I like to keep track of, because I like to always think that I'm going to build this for more people, is our system user table our system user table and that basically just has user information like uh, you know how they log in passwords um, etc etc um, all right 
there's that. Let's grab another one and let's put in, sorry, I'm kind of thinking through this as we go. So we have a, a user table and every user is going to have a set of categories. Um, and these are categories that they can manage um, and control. So let's, uh, let's call this a category. And that category belongs to a user. All right. And, you know, and as far as arrows go and stuff, um, really this should go this other way. So I'm actually going to delete that guy and let's drag it this way because I kind of want to show, hey, this uh, category belongs to a system user. Because really what I like to do is I kind of like to put these up here, just down here and let's actually uh, grab you. Let's put you a little over here. All right, so there's our category. And then from a category we have, um, let's grab another square and we are going to put uh, an entry and I'm just gonna call it that. I'm gonna say an, an entry and that's our time entry. Um, and that time entry um, belongs to a category. Just like that. All right, and that's pretty simple, pretty simple structure there. Um, where basically we have a system user, a category, and an entry. Um, and I'm trying to think of any way we could add a little bit more uh, flair to this. So there's our category. Let's say we want an optional organization. Like let's say we're kind of letting you track this um, um, by, let's say instead of just category, um, let's say we want to track, um, actually, let's say we want to track what items we did, um, kind of like we have an embedded to-do list in our, in our entry. Could you define what, you know, I mean, category means in the context of what you're imagining or entry, what an entry means in the context of your idea and so on? Yeah, and we'll, we'll do a little bit of that here in just a second, because I'll actually, I'm going to keep this somewhat simple. Okay. Um, so we can, so then we can then go and actually build it in SQL. Um, and then we'll actually just build the real ERD off of it. Um, um, basically the category, yeah, it'll make sense here in just a minute. Cause we'll actually throw some test data into, we're just going to take this as far as we can for today. Um, let's call that a task. All right. Let's leave it just like this, nice and simple. It's uh, really, really super simple in this case. We don't have a lot of like webbing going out or anything like that. Um, yeah, nothing too crazy. So let's, uh, yeah, let's, uh, we're gonna take this little diagram here. We're gonna keep it, keep it handy. Um, and we're actually gonna build this. Now for our projects, we need 12 tables, right? Um, but we are going to, uh, I'm just going to demo this real quick. Um, it has four tables and I could actually probably add enough of uh, enough uh, tables to kind of meet the project. So let's, uh, let's, uh, let's build it. So the first thing we want to do is let's create a database and we're going to call this, uh, um, let's call it uh, ASCII. That's a good name. So there's our database. We're going to use TASCII. Now, if I refresh over here, we should get our new database um, with nothing in it. So what we want to do is we want to start creating some tables. Um, so our first table that we're going to create is our system user table. So create table system user. And you'll find that I really like to do things manually. Um, there in, in most IDEs, like I could right click here um, and I could, I could create a new table. Um, I could, I could do a lot of different things um, with the GUI, but I actually find that it's a lot faster just to kind of go in um, and do it manually. Um, 
to me, it's actually faster. Um, and it's nice because then it's scriptable, which I'll show you here in just a minute. So we're going to create our system user table. And the first thing I'm going to put in here is our primary key. Um, so what I like to do is even though it's the system user table, I'm going to call this user ID. And that is going to be an int. And it's going to be a primary key auto. My OCD's kicking in, we'll make it pretty here for us. All right, so some other things we might want in our system user table, um, since we're just kind of tracking um, kind of our bare necessities is um, an email address. So let's create our email and it's going to be a var chart and we're gonna let them put a 60 character long email in there. And we want it to be not null, meaning it can't be empty. We don't want a user that doesn't have an email address. And, and that's really important. So those not nulls are called constraints. And when we build that constraint on there, we're saying, hey, email, you can't be empty. And so if someone tries to put a record in uh, without an email, it won't let them. And that's really nice because then when we build our logic out, we can always know that email is going to be there. All right, so another thing we might want is a password and uh, passwords are, can get kind of tricky. Um, I like to do mine obviously encrypted, um, but for, for this process, we're gonna keep it pretty, uh, pretty simple. So um, we're gonna make that not null as well. Um, I like to make it nice and long so it can hold an encrypted string or a hashed encrypted strings because you're usually pretty long. So we have our email password. Let's put in a first name. Um, again, we're gonna let them have 60 character long names and a last name. And we're not gonna enforce names. We're gonna, we're gonna have it there, but we're not going to enforce it. Um, and let's see, is there anything else missing? We have an email, password, first name and last name. And I think that's good. Let's, uh, let's leave it there. Um, and we're gonna just, uh, we're just gonna build it just like that. So now our table's created, I'm going to refresh here. Um, and now we should see our system user table. All right. Now we're gonna, so there's our system user table. Um, and why I do this, I like to create uh, scripts that are rerunnable. So whenever I create a table, I like to, create the same thing to drop that table. So that way it's rerunnable because everything I write, I don't want to have to ever write again. And, but I also want to keep it in case I want to uh, duplicate it on a test server. So I could say test underscore task key as my database and create this as a whole new database in case I want to test something. So I like to script all my stuff um, just like this. And you'll see me add it as we go here. Um, so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create my table. And if we take a look at our diagram, uh, we have our category. And our category is going to kind of be a big catch-all. Um, because in my sense, the category can be whatever the user kind of chooses to do it. But essentially for us, it's a way that we're going to lump time log entries together. Um, so for example, for my use case, why I actually want this, um, is because I do uh, some contract work and, um, you know, keeping track of that hourly, I do on a spreadsheet. And I thought, man, it'd be nice to have an app, right? Where I could just go in and real quick say, open my app. Um, Cause like sometimes, you know, you get a call. It'd be nice to just open up that app, say, you know, start time. Um, this is the category or the company that it's for. Um, and it would be logging the time. And then as soon as I'm done, I could end time and it would create a log entry for me. Um, so um, our category is going to be whatever it is. So like, you know, for me, it would be um, for maybe a business. Um, but I could also say, you know, housework, like how much time do I spend doing housework? And I could create a category for that alongside my other one. So I kind of want to make it multi-purpose um, and, uh, and, and kind of easy and simple. So the first thing we're going to do is we're always going to start with our primary key. So our category ID is an int. It's a primary key. And we are going to set that to auto increment. So it counts up for us, which we'll, we'll talk about here in a minute. Um, and then I'm going to give my category a name. 
and we're going to let them name that uh, up to 100 characters, let's say. And we don't want any categories that aren't named, right? Like that wouldn't make any sense to have a category that doesn't have a name. And these categories are going to be pretty simple. Um, the other thing I want to kind of add is like, let's say we're, um, we want this to be able to um, be buildable on an app. I'm, I'm actually thinking about building this as an app. So um, let's say that we want to uh, give the, a color um, and we're going to make that a hex color. So we're going to give this varchar and let's see a hex is, I think, seven characters long. We're going to let that be null. Um, you don't have to set a custom color. If, if the color's not there, we'll just put one for it. Um, and then let's also do an icon. Um, and, and for the icon, instead of storing the actual image, because I don't want to store the image, um, what I'm going to do for the icon is I'm going to just have it be a string. And that string, I'm thinking like Font Awesome. If you guys have ever heard of Font Awesome, I use that in a lot of uh, my work. Um, and so Font Awesome um, has a string for every, every icon. So like, let's say it is for um, school. I wanna track how much schoolwork, um, how much time I spend doing schoolwork. You know, there's like a, a name of the icon that we can, that we can pick. Um, so I'm gonna store that icon or that string in here. So let's make this, uh, let's just make this 20 characters long. We'll start there. And again, that can be null. Oh, well, one important thing we're missing. So that's a good place to start with it. But one thing we're missing is we need to be able to tie category to a user because we're gonna have multiple people using this and we don't want everybody to see everyone's category. Um, so we want to tie category to user. So to do that, we're going to add user ID. Obviously we want the user ID to match the same data type here. So that's gonna be an int. And obviously we want that to be not null. We don't want categories to not have a person assigned to it. So, so now we have user ID and we could make this work, but I like to make things official. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually build the relationship between these two tables. Um, so what I do is I build a constraint and then I give that constraint a name. And in this case, I always like to do uh, the, the table, so category um, and foreign key and then a number. So in this case, it's categories, foreign key, number one. And we say it's a foreign key and it is on user ID. And it is going to reference system user, user ID. All right, so what this does is it actually builds the relationship. It tells the computer, hey, um, this user ID in this table is a foreign key that points to system user. So when I insert a record into category, this user ID has to match someone here because that's how we're tying, oh, um, this category called school belongs to Billy, so to speak. So let's, uh, let's make sure this works. There we go, we're all built and run. Um, and there we have that, we have our category. Um, and now I'm going to drop and, the tricky thing about dropping these is you have to do it in reverse order. If I tried to drop it beforehand, it would actually fail because system user exists and now it depends on it. So as I build my tables, it kind of goes in down this way, um, but in the drop, it's going to be reverse. All right, so now we have um, our categories. Um, what else do we have? We have our entries. So let's, uh, let's build our entry table. Create table entry. We're gonna have our entry ID. It's going to be an int primary key. And we're gonna auto increment that column. All right. And an entry belongs to a category. So we're gonna put category ID. Same thing, it should look pretty similar. Um, we're gonna make that not null. And we're just gonna build our constraint while we're here. So I'm gonna say constraint 
entry fk1 foreign key category ID references category category ID there we go and what this is what this references is, is this is the table name and then in parentheses you put the column so it knows like oh what is it referencing the category table and category ID all right so there's our constraint um, let's add uh, start time and I'm gonna do something kind of uh, kind of funny here um, Because one of the things um, that I kind of foresee, um, do we always have to put the FK1 if we want to connect two tables? Um, technically, yes. Um, if you want it to be, um, if you want it to be uh, normalized, um, so standardized, um, how it should be, um, and which is part of the part of the um, requirements for this project, um, is that you you definitely want to have your foreign key. Um, Cause without that foreign key, um, it could, it could mess, you could mess up your whole database. Um, so it's really important you have those foreign keys. Now, one thing is let's say that we wanted to, cause I can kind of see where you're going with this maybe. Um, so let's say that we want to log time and let's say that they don't have to belong to a category. If we said, oh, um, an entry doesn't have to belong to a category, but we still want it tied together. You just delete that not null. And now an entry can exist without a category, but the only thing is we definitely want to tie it to system user. Um, but in my case, like I'm going to make it mandatory that you have to have a category. So that's why I put the not null um, because you can build this and have it be nullable and then technically it's not, uh, it doesn't have to be connected, but the connection, the relationship exists, which we're gonna talk about some of the benefits of that. Um, I'm gonna showcase some of the benefits of that and we can maybe even run through what it looks like without it to kind of show you why you might not want to ever consider not having the foreign key defined because it is a little bit of work, but it's a one-liner that's gonna save you tons of time. And if you ever, do this in a professional setting without these foreign keys, um, it's disastrous. It's, it's just really bad, bad practice. Um, so anyways, um, with this entry, one of the things that I kind of want to do, um, is I want to make it so you can manually put in minutes. Um, and let's do 10 to. So what I'm doing with this entry table is I'm saying there's a start time, there's an end time, and then there's a column called manual minutes. And what that manual minutes is going to do is it's going to, uh, it's going to let me manually type in how many minutes, and actually I don't want that a decimal. Let's make that an eight. It's going to, uh, it's going to let me hand type. So let's say I'm putting it in after the fact, like, uh, oh, I, um, on this date, I just did so many minutes, right? Um, let's do date um, entered. All right, so for our entry table, there's gonna be this date entered and that's just when I plug it in. And I can manually type in the minutes. I'm just thinking ahead on my app, you know. It, I can manually punch in like, okay, you know, I helped these guys for, for uh, 30 minutes. Um, you know, let's say I got a quick phone call because let's say I'm putting it in after the fact. But then let's say that I'm also like saying, okay, I'm gonna sit down and work on this project. I'm starting now, I don't know when I'm gonna end. Um, you know, I don't want to keep track. So then I work and let's say I finish, I can just kind of punch out and it calculates minutes for me. Um, but we're going to have a calculated minutes as well. Um, and that calculated minutes is going to also 
um, take into consideration this, which is all back in logic, which we'll work on. We'll work on eventually. All right, so, so here we are. We have entry ID, category ID, date entered. Um, let's make sure this works. Um, let's see, what did we mess up on? I'm guessing it is this per date. There we go. Oh, I still have something. It might not like this default. Let's just take it out for now. My SQL, I can never remember if the current, if the default comes before or after the not null. All right, so there we go. We have our entry table. Let's uh, drop it just so it's here. Oh, and I need to drop table entry. I forgot to put table on here. There we go. All right, so now we have um, a lot of our tables. And I know we talked about putting a task in here, but I'm actually gonna skip that for the sake of time because we're already at, uh, um, we, we've got about 15 minutes left um, on the hour mark. Um, and what I wanna do is I wanna throw some data in here, but before we do that, I wanna, I wanna generate our ERD. So what I'm gonna do, oh, so what the drop does. So um, yeah, let's, uh, so you can see I have my tables over here, they exist. Um, I can select from them. So I can say select everything from entry. And you know, it's there. If I run this, I just deleted that table. So now the table doesn't exist. So that drop table, what it does is it actually deletes the whole table and all the data inside. So you don't wanna do it willy nilly, but the whole reason that I have that in there is so that I can recreate all of this with one run. Um, so what I can do is I can actually execute this uh, script in bulk and have it run the whole thing. So I can say, um, execute SQL script. Um, yep, so skip because we already deleted it and it recreates everything. So now if I refresh this um, and I like doing that because see now I can rerun this over and over and over again. Um, let's go ahead um, and it will recreate everything. So, so I like to kind of like, I would name this uh, init tasky.sql. Um, because it's going to uh, create all of our structures that we need for our, for our database. In fact, let's do that. Let's uh, let's uh, let's go file. And I'm going to go save as, and I'm going to call this. And I'm just going to put it right on my desktop. I'm going to call it um, in it. And you can see I've done this for a couple other ones. In it catalog. Um, I'm going to call it in it tasky dot sql um, because it initializes tasky. Um, uh, some other uh, basic, some people like to do a tasky underscore schema because it builds your schema. In fact, let's go with that route. So I'm going to say tasky schema um, because it's going to build our structure or the schema. All right. So there's our uh, that. And I am going to uh, just leave this. Actually, you know, let's create a new tab. Let's just... Uh, Let's open a new script. We're going to say use tasky again. And now what we're going to do is we're going to create some sample data. Um, and I'm going to show you a little trick. Um, one thing you can do in, and I'm using dbeaver uh, because I can make it zoom. Yeah, so Jandy brings up a perfect point. Um, she says the benefit would be that you could change something as you are building and it would delete the previous version. And as you run the script, you always get the most current version. Yeah, so like, let's say, let's say all of a sudden I decide, oh, I want to change um, like this color. Let's say this, I want to rename this column or I want to, uh, let's just say I want to add a new whole new column or I want to change this data type and I want to make this 10 characters long. I can't just rerun this because it already exists. So the nice thing about having my scripts is that I can just make the change to the file and execute it. And now all of a sudden my color is 10, 10 
entries long um, instead of whatever, seven or whatever it used to be. So, so yes, that's a very good point that as you're building this, um, it's nice because you can't just, you know, change this and rerun that one little portion. You kind of have to, to continually run it. And there's ways you can edit the table after the fact. So once we have data in there that we can't recreate, we would want to do that. But in development mode, like what we're in right now, we definitely want to just continually, it's easier to just drop it and recreate it. And I like to script that so that I can do it on any computer at any time um, and recreate it all. So very good point. I'm glad you brought that up. Um, Cause like I'll put this in a Git and then I'll can put it on any of my computers. So if I'm working on my desktop, run my Git and then um, my wife Taylor says, Hey, um, we're watching the new episode of Mandalorian, but I can't quit working. I can just grab my laptop, pull the Git down and keep working. That's one of the other benefit, but yeah, good point. All right. So now what we're going to do is we're going to throw some sample data in. Um, and I'm going to make my life a little easier in dBeaver, and I'm pretty sure MySQL Workbench has the same functionality. I'm going to right-click on my table, do Generate SQL, and I'm going to generate an insert statement. And it, uh, it kind of builds it for me, um, which is really nice in case you ever uh, need to kind of use it. So it kind of puts it in there. Um, I'm going to actually take this out. All right, so there's our values. So now what I can do is I can just throw some values in. You'll notice that it's missing user ID and that's because we already auto-generated it. Um, so I'm gonna put a couple people in here um, or just one for right now. So I'm gonna put in, um, we're gonna put Frodo at Shire.net. Oh, what am I doing here? It's, it's May the 4th day tomorrow. We gotta be a uh, Harry Potter oriented. Um, so, There we go, Obi-Wan at Jedi.net, um, his password. Right now we're just gonna do it in, uh, um, in uh, clear. So his password's gonna be Blue Saber. Um, his name's gonna be Obi-Wan. Don't laugh at me, I'm a Star Trek fan, Kenobi. I'm a Star Trek fan, not super Star Wars, but. Anyways, we're going to insert in there. So now we have some, some data in our system user table. Um, let's do the same thing for our category, but this time for our category, we're going to, we're going to build a couple. Um, so I'm going to grab that. Um, our user ID. So this is where we get to kind of have a little bit of fun. So our values. And this is where my OCD really uh, kicks in here. All right, so, because we want to tie this record to Obi-Wan Kenobi. Now we could just say, oh, you know, select everything from system user and find out what it is. Um, you know, it's one and we could just put that one there. But I like to be a little bit more in control and have it be rerunnable and everything. So what I do is I like to make it dynamic. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna run a subquery and we're gonna say select user ID from user, from system user, where email is equal to Obi-Wan at Jedi.net. And this is gonna get it for me. And what I like about subqueries is we can just test that here. So we can know that this is gonna return a one right there. So we don't have to worry if that ever changes, which it shouldn't, or if we drop everything and recreate it and it keeps counting up, it's gonna just keep working the way we want it to, which is really nice. Um, so Obi-Wan, um, we're going to say that his uh, category is um, Jedi training. And we're going to say that the color is hashtag. Um, he just wants it to be, uh, let's just make up something. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know my hex colors very well. We could look it up, but I'm not that interested. Yeah. 
Yeah. So, um, Emacs asks a great question. She says, do you choose email over the first and last name to avoid duplicates that have the same name? And the, the answer is yes. Um, which is one good point that I was going to wait to bring up. Um, but, but you're absolutely right. And she says like two guys named John Smith and, and yes. And, and one thing that we really should do that we're going to do right now is we're actually going to make it so our email has to be unique because no two people can have the same email, right? And we don't want to let people sign up under someone else's email. So that way they can't have an account. You can imagine what all the little high school type kids would do to their friends. Ha ha, you can't sign up for Facebook because I signed up with your email address. You know what I mean? So what we're going to do is we're going to make it unique. So um, let's do this. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a unique index. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a unique index uh, called system user UK1 on system user email. And what this is gonna do is it's going to create our unique index. So that way um, it, uh, it has to be unique um, and we can try that. But basically if I try to put Obi-Wan Kenobi in here twice, it's gonna break. So let's just try it. If I try this again, You'll notice as it says duplicate entry Obi-Wan at Jedi.net for key system user dot system user UK1. Um, so it won't let me. And so now when we're doing, just like you said, the reason we're using our email and now we're enforcing it, right, is that our email is guaranteed to be unique. We know for a fact that an email address cannot exist twice in our system user database table. All right, so now let's insert this category. Um, let's also do another one. Um, I'm just going to take and copy that. Um, and instead of Jedi training, um, blue milk making, um, blue cow milking to get the blue milk, right? Blue cow milking. Um, and we're going to do F a shovel, I don't know, or bucket. Let's do bucket. I'm sure there's a bucket one and we're going to change this to um, whatever the color blue is. I have no idea. Let's say that this is blue. All right. So now we have our, our system user um, and some categories. Um, and just to check that, we're going to select everything from category. There we go. We can see our, our stuff going on there. All right, so now what we're going to do is we're going to create just a couple of sample of oh, someone's got me on the, the blue. Uh, thank you. I want to make sure that's accurate. Um, and just so you can see an update statement, we're going to update category. We're going to set color equal to that where um, category ID is equal to two. Oh, fixed. Perfect. All right. So, um, so now let's build one entry uh, or a couple entries. Let's build a couple entries into each. So let's uh, generate some SQL and insert. Um, and it's not too complicated. We could write this from scratch, but yeah, we're just not going to. Um, so again, what we're going to do is we are going to build our, our entries here so that they are rerunnable and normalized and work good. So what we're going to do is we're going to write our select statement. We're going to select category ID from category where, and since we can have multiple users, we're going to get a little a little funny here. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to say cat interjoin system user su on cat dot user ID is equal to 
su.user ID where system user dot email is equal to obi-wan at jedi.net and the category name is equal to uh, Jedi training. Let's make sure that this works. There we go. And again, this is category ID one, but we're gonna just do that so it works perfect. So we have Obi-Wan's Jedi training category. Um, and let's see, now we have our date entered. And for our date entered, we're gonna do cur date, just the current date. And let's say this is gonna be one of those where we don't really, uh, um, let's say we just wanna punch in some time. We don't really want to have it be um, like uh, from a start time to an end time. So we're gonna leave these blank. And in fact, instead of this, we're gonna say null. I like nulls way better than empty strings. So we're gonna leave that null. Um, and then let's say that he spent uh, 60 minutes doing his stuff. Now this is all gonna be built into the application the way we do that logic, but let's uh, do that there and let's do it again. Um, uh, let's do cur date. Let's do this, let's do date sub cur date interval to day. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna say, oh, two days ago, he did Jedi training for, um, let's say 60 minutes again. Yeah. Um, and let's take, and we're just gonna do the same thing, but instead of uh, Jedi training, um, it's going to be blue cow milking. Blue cow, blue bow, blue cow milking. There we go. Um, and on this one, we're just gonna do an interval one day. You can't miss, uh, you can't skip a date milking cows, but it only takes them 30 minutes to milk that blue cow out on the deserts of Tatooine. All right, so we're going to run that, run this one, and we're good. All right, so now what we can do is we have our, uh, our, our test data. So I'm actually going to save this one as well. Um, I'm going to save this file, save as. We're gonna call this a uh, tasky uh, data sample.sql. All right, so now if I just wanna create the, the base database, I can do that. And if I wanna put some sample database in, I can just run this other script super easy and we're done. Um, so now what we're gonna do is I'm gonna actually just create a new script. Um, and we are going to just run some queries to kind of take a look at our data. So um, let's take a look at everything in our entry, select everything from entry. Um, so we have a few entries. We can see that they're all manually entered times. We have these different categories IDs. And so someone asked earlier, like, do we have to? And well, one, the answer is yes, but two, there's a lot of benefits. So you can see right here, it's probably hard to see on your screen. I can't, uh, I don't think I can blow this up any. But on category ID, there's this little link button. And if I click this, it actually takes me to that category ID. Um, so now I can see, oh, it's Jedi training. And then from there, I can actually click on the user ID and it takes me to Obi-Wan. So, so there's lots of benefits and it only knows that because of, of our foreign key constraints. Um, and we're about out of time. So the last thing I wanna do is generate our ERD. Um, and this is going to be a little different here than it is in MySQL Workbench. So apologies, but um, I uh, I can't make Workbench Zoom. So I uh, I use this instead, and I actually like it. I use it all over. Um, but I'm going to build one so you can kind of see it. I know that you know how to do it for the other ones because I think 
that we had to do for an assignment. If, if not, it's pretty easy to do. Um, but I'm going to go File, New, and I'm going to do an ER diagram. I'm going to hit Next, and in this case, I'm going to do my local host, and I'm going to do Tasky. Oh, and I need to give it a name. Let's say Tasky is our name here. So let's finish. And I know that this isn't much of an ERD as far as complexity goes, but uh, you can see now that we are all connected um, with an actual ERD, just like what we had earlier. You can kind of see the similarities. Um, I kept it simple. The only thing that's different is this one has all of our, our column names um, because I actually kind of like to build it as I go. And then if I think of something, I'll just, oh, let me go update my, uh, my script. Kind of like what we did with our, oh, I forgot we need a unique index. Um, let's go throw that on. Um, and so from there I can use this. Um, because what's nice is if I ever want to refresh this, I, it's just as easy as clicking a few buttons and it's, and it's ready. Um, so I like to rough draft my ERD um, without column names, just to kind of like wrap my head around it. You know, and you can jot down little notes as to what columns you might have there. Um, but I like to rough draft it um, just to kind of wrap my head around scope and, and connections and things like that, and then build out this ERD, um, which, which at this point, you know, if I had enough tables, this would be my deliverable, right? I, I would be done with one of my deliverables um, and more, because uh, that's what I like to say. One of the things that I really like about keeping my scripts here is this is a deliverable. Um, this is a deliverable. Um, because these are all test cases as well. Um, so for example, this one is a, is, these are all create, but you know, as part of my CRUD operations, this is a create into system user, like a user sign up or um, user add category. Like a lot of our test cases are already done and we didn't even have to do a whole lot besides, you know, oh, I just want to kind of visualize this. Um, and that's what we end up with. Um, does that help you guys kind of get a good idea of where you might want to start? Um, so obviously you don't need to build this overnight, but you know, if you did a couple tables every, every few days, you know, eventually you would be pretty much done and all you'd have left to do is a, a couple of the more fun parts where you get to kind of draw your UI and and your presentation. Yeah, it's, it's really not that bad. Um, and really, I think the biggest uh, challenge is A, don't procrastinate, and B, um, you know, start with what you know, and, you know, don't, because uh, you don't want to have to redo too much work. Um, and that's why I think rough draft this. If all you did in the next week is rough draft this and maybe start writing the sequel to build some of these tables, I would say you're perfectly on track. Um, perfectly on track because we're going to keep learning, keep uh, keep learning some stuff because um, I'm going to keep, my goal is to kind of do similar structure what we did today, which should cover brief uh, what the content for the week is um, and then kind of dive into this um, so that hopefully we can keep everything rolling and good. Well, perfect. Um, does anyone have any questions? Any questions? All right, well, it doesn't look like there's any questions. Um, if any come up, just feel free to uh, uh, shoot me a message on Teams. More than happy to get back to you. If you want me to look over a rough kind of sketch, because this one's pretty simple, and next week I'm gonna try to make it a little more complicated. Um, I wanna make it a little more complicated so you can kind of see some different design concepts because this one's super easy. It's just a, you know, straight through, perfect hierarchy, nothing complicated, but there's gonna be some of your projects that will require a more complicated design. So if you, if you hit snags or anything like that, feel free to let me know um, um, because maybe it'll make a good example for the rest of the class as to like how it works um, and that kind of stuff. So, so don't, don't, hesitate to reach out. Um, good luck this week. Um, and yeah, we'll, we'll talk again soon.
Thank you. Yeah, thank you.